NerdRotic.com. Welcome back to NerdRotic. My name is Gary Beekler, and I come to you from NerdRotic.com. And MCU, the woke is on you. And I can hear some of you right now. Avengers Endgame is going to make all of the money. They're going to have to invent new money to give to Disney because they are going to take it all. Avengers Endgame is going to make more money than the GDP of some countries. So what is the problem? Well... I think a hundred YouTubers, maybe less, maybe more, I'm not sure, have been talking about it for quite some time before Captain Marvel, more after Captain Marvel. But now we see the evidence of you cannot satisfy some people. They are called the PC crowd, the SJWs, the MPC, whoever they are, they are a giant big mouth that you can feed all you want, but it will never ever be full it'll never ever be satisfied and we have more evidence of this from the daily mail and while this doesn't seem like a big problem now and everything is working out time will tell the real battle of the avengers how male superheroes in the new 694 million endgame movie enjoy three times more screen time than female characters. Marvel's new Avengers Endgame is on track to becoming one of the most successful films in cinema history. It is expected to beat its predecessor, Infinity War, by 200 million, which would make it the largest ever debut. Chris Evans' Captain America enjoys the most screen time, one hour and six minutes, followed by Iron Man. British actress Karen Gillan, playing the cyborg Nebula, has 41 minutes, the highest of any female superhero. Real quickly, I'd like to add congratulations to Karen Gillan. You were one of the best things in the film. And as a Doctor Who fan, it's great seeing you get all the success you deserve. As I've stated in previous videos, these articles are often word salads. They have to meet a word count, so they repeat a lot of stuff, and I'm not going to read back to you what they just repeated. The Marvel blockbuster is predicted to surpass its predecessor, Avengers Infinity War, by 200 million, which would crown the new superhero film as the largest debut in the history of cinema and possibly the first film to break $1 billion in less than a week. Endgame's roster includes at least 30 superheroes, but it seems the real battle is more one between the sexes than against gauntlet-wielding supervillains. As major male characters enjoy a combined 381 minutes of screen time compared to only 116 minutes for their female counterparts, Chris Evans' Captain America enjoys one hour and six minutes of screen time, the most of any of the film's stars, followed by Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man with one hour and two minutes, and Chris Hemsworth's with Thor with 45 minutes. I would just like to point out that Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor are the reason this film made a billion dollars in almost a week. They are the reason Marvel Comics have been around for decades. They are the reason that boys purchased them for decades and kept this franchise alive for decades because of men and boys. We like having girls along. There are plenty of girls in this film, but I'd say the percentages are about right. If you have a problem with that, talk to the girls who aren't buying comics. Maybe less men should see this film and make room for the women who don't want to see it. And this is why we can't have nice things. As a matter of fact, you could have put a countdown clock on an article like this. As a matter of fact, I think they just waited to fill in the times. This thing was pre-written maybe months, maybe a year ago. British actress Karen Gillan, known for playing Amy Pond in Doctor Who, has the most screen time of all the female stars, and the fourth most of all, appearing for 41 minutes as the cyborg Nebula. But the franchise's latest star, Captain Marvel, played by Brie Larson, appears for only a merciful 15 minutes despite her recent blockbuster, and again and again, the Captain Marvel bots, those ones in the access media and the ones on Twitter, the one thing they constantly go to is the box office. They don't go to the film. They don't go to their favorite parts because there are no favorite parts in their film, not even for the people who like that film. Again, it was a merciful 15 minutes, and honestly, it was too much. Every second of her being in that film was utterly cringeworthy, and in the theater I saw it, there was no cheers, no applause. Even for that scene you thought would bring a cheer, it was utter silence in the movie theater. Now, of course, that was just my theater and it might have been different somewhere else. Let's go to this article, breaking down the actual minutes of each character, but forgetting one. Where is Gamora? Who is Gamora? Why is Gamora? 
Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow enjoys 33 minutes of screen time and Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie appears for just 8 minutes. The Sun reported Avengers Endgame is directed by the Russo brothers who shot last year's Avengers Infinity War. Endgame is the sequel to Avengers Infinity War, Gobbledygook, World Salad. Screen time in Marvel's Avengers Endgame because someone had time for this and well, I've got time to react to it. Captain America, 1 hour and 6 minutes. Nebula, 41 minutes. Iron Man, 1 hour and 2 minutes. Black Widow, 33 minutes, Thor, 45 minutes, Captain Marvel, 15 minutes too long, Hulk, 40 minutes, Valkyrie, 8 minutes, Ant-Man, 38 minutes, Shuri, 7 minutes, Hawkeye, 37 minutes, Okoye, 6 minutes, Rocket, 36 minutes, at least we got some Trash Panda representation. Mantis, 6 minutes, War Machine, 35 minutes, Groot, 7 minutes, Drax, 7 minutes, Wong, 6 minutes, Loki, 2 minutes, total of 381 minutes for the men, total of 116 minutes for the women. Maybe I need to state the obvious once again. This has always been a male franchise. Now, they have made great progress in adapting the female characters that were already in the Marvel Comics universe. We see more women in comic stores. We see more women working at comic stores. Unfortunately, not enough, though. We do see more women at comic cons, but they aren't buying comic books. One of the reasons the MCU has remained successful is because it was making films for its target audience, but it looks like like it won't be doing that anymore. These are the people that Marvel is going to listen to. We are not the people Marvel is going to listen to, and that is why they are going down the woke highway. The MCU is going for woke, and while it won't go broke, it will definitely derail the franchise. Eventually, not today. Not tomorrow, not anytime soon, but we can certainly see this coming. Just to be perfectly clear that I am not insinuating that this movie is not going to make money, this weekend it broke every record, $156.7 million opening day. Avengers Endgame was an enjoyable film. I thought it was a decent bookend to the MCU, a historic franchise that we will never see the likes of again. Kevin Feige will have streets named after him, and they might change the name of Hollywood to Feigewood unless he goes down the woke highway and tarnishes his reputation down the road. I would recommend maybe bowing out Kevin Feige. You can bow out on top and go run Warner Brothers or something like that, but he probably won't, and I certainly think Disney is the one putting some of this stuff in, although I thought Kevin Feige was completely in charge, and maybe he's behind all this. I certainly thought he was smarter than this, but maybe he isn't. And yes, I'm talking about the obvious introduction to the all-new, all-different Marvel. All the signs are pointing in this direction, and all the data has proven within Marvel Comics that this is an utter failure. But enjoy Avengers Endgame, enjoy the end of the MCU as we know it, and go see it again and again if you like. Again, it's an enjoyable film, I like the ending, but I don't like the next chapter it is setting up. I have talked about that quite a bit, uh, about six hours worth of live streams over the weekend. Please check them out, links will be in the description. In the meantime... I just hope I'm wrong about this stuff. I hope the MCU does not do this. But when you get articles like this and Disney and the MCU and Kevin Feige listen to people writing these pre-written articles, obviously, because you forgot Gamora, well, that's why we get scenes like this in Avengers Endgame. One of the only real cringe scenes. Now, of course, this isn't an actual picture. I'm not going to put that up because I think I've made my point and I don't need the copyright strike. But I hope you see my point, Kevin Feige, MCU, and Disney. You put a scene like this in Avengers Endgame and it still doesn't make anybody happy. They're still going to put out articles breaking down the screen time for women. And this is why we can't have nice things. Marvel is simply making a movie to its target audience. It's no longer going to do that and it does that to its peril. Thanks, Access Media and people who don't really buy comics and don't really buy into this stuff and who will not be into it in a few years. And if it all does end up crashing and burning, it will, of course, be the fans' fault. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like it, well, why the hell are you listening this long? Please go to nerdrotic.com for my live stream schedule. Everybody have a great day, and may the small folks sing songs of your greatness.
nerderotic.com. Please subscribe.